In this tutorial we're going to use this image here by Frank Winkler. If you go onto Pixabay and you choose to use this image, please buy him a coffee or follow him to say thank you for the use of the image. I've taken the image into Photoshop and what I'm going to do is show you how we can use the vanishing point filter to create some new elements to go into this scene using 3D in Photoshop. So I'm going to start by going to filter vanishing point and in here I've defined a grid. Now if you want to know how this was created it's very very simple you just draw the four points using the plane tool and then make sure it matches up with the area that you want to place your th new 3D object in. Okay so I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to create my object so I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just draw a square. I've got white selected as my foreground color so it makes it white and then I'm going to go to my 3D menu and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. That's going to make it into a cube. Now you'll notice that we're kind of looking straight on at the cube. It's not really sitting within that scene correctly. It's not at the right angle. Now notice over here, over in our 3D panel, it's got my rectangle selected and down here I've got all the properties for my rectangle. If I close that and open if I close that and instead open up the current view, I'm able to change the properties for my view. So I can change the field of view of the camera, things like that. Or I can choose a preset and you'll see under here I've got vanishing point grid. And as soon as I select that, it places that cube into my scene at the correct angle. Now I want to add some texture to this, so I'm going to go into my layers and I'm going to use the vanishing point tool to create some textures. So I'm going to close up this layer and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it texture. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in to the vanishing point tool. Now I don't really need this plane anymore so I'm just going to move it out of the way and let's make it smaller that way as well. I'll leave it there because I might want to extend it and use it later. But I'm going to start creating some more uh, planes and you'll see now how they're created. So I'm going to click on the four corners of this element here first of all. And you'll notice that when I do it places a selection around that element. I'm then going to draw some planes over this element as well. So any elements that I want to take my textures from, I need to grab the plane tool and then just draw around the textures that I want. Okay, now this one, if I want to take textures from the top and the bottom, or the front and the side, if I hold down the command key, I can actually pull the side out from the existing plane, and then I've got an angle control up here, which allows me to choose the angle. So it's important to get that angle right, because you don't want to have any weird distortions on the textures that you're using. So I've defined those. The other thing that I need to define are the planes of my cube. Now I'm going to click OK for a second and I'm going to change slightly the angle of the cube. So I'm going to go back to my rectangle layer, select it, and then I'm going to double click it to open up my 3D settings or I could just go to the 3D tab. Select the rectangle and all I'm going to do is just move it around. So notice by hovering my cursor over this axis I can move things, or I can rotate things, or I can scale things. Now I want to rotate it on the x-axis, so I'm going to hover until I get that little wheel, and I'm just going to rotate it around a little bit. So I've got a bit of a more interesting angle going with the kind of direction of the floorboards. The nice thing about the vanishing point tool is you can jump in and out. So now I go back and it's updated. So let's grab the plane tool again and I'm going to draw a plane on the front of my cube. Okay, so there we go. Those points there, drag it up a little bit and then hold down the command key, control if you're on Windows, drag out that plane and then adjust its angle so until it fits in. And then we'll just scale it back a little bit. Okay, need to adjust that angle just a little bit more 
Okay, and then we'll drag one along the side here. Adjust the angle. Let's pull that back. Okay, so I've now defined the angles on my box. I've defined the angles on the textures that I want to use. How do I get the textures onto the box? One thing that's important to do first is if you click OK and come out of Vanishing Point, just make sure you've got a separate layer for your textures. You can place textures onto the same layer as other layers, but I really recommend creating a new layer just for the textures. So add a new layer, rename it Texture. We'll go back into the Vanishing Point tool. And then all I need to do now is select the texture that I want to put on the box. So I'm going to select this texture here. And you'll notice that when I use the Selection tool in the Vanishing Point tool, it allows me to select in perspective. And then if I hold down the Alt key and click, I can drag that texture onto the box. And you'll notice that it uses perspective to work out where to place it on the box. It's just amazing. So I'm going to place it there, and then I'm going to Alt, click and drag again to create a copy. And then we'll also put one around the side, so I'm going to select that again. Alt, click and drag, place one down the side here. And then Alt, click and drag, just to duplicate it. Now if I wanted a different material on the front, I could select this one here, drag that. Maybe have that on the front or on the top or both. OK, and when I click OK, because these are on a separate layer, they're not actually affecting my 3D layer at all. So I'm not having to mess around with 3D settings to get the texture that I want on my 3D element. Now, at the moment, it looks a little bit flat. But if I use a blending mode, uh, we can choose how to composite it with the, the footage underneath. So something like multiply mode works really well because it will multiply it with the shadows that you've got there already. And the nice thing is at any point I can go and adjust that. So if I decide I want a lighter wood on the side here, go back into vanishing point and um, I'm just going to grab my selection tool again and I'm going to set some lighter planks and I'm going to have them on the side. And that will just immediately update. So it's a really good way of just adding some 3D elements into the scene. And of course, because it's a true 3D element, then if I go into 3D and uh, adjust my light, for example, it's going to adjust the way that the shadow um, moves onto the floor. So it's a real 3D layer, but my textures are on another layer altogether. So that's just an idea of how you can start to combine textures together and bring new elements into your scene using 3D and the Vanishing Point tool.